In order to draw the lines in on the opposite side of the dress, I will trace with a black or you know a pen that shows up, I will trace the seam allowance on this side of the pattern. And then you can place the pattern over to trace this second side. So the fronts and backs are traced, and in our next video we will start with the sewing. Okay, so we are about ready to start sewing this dress. The first thing that you want to do is on the back of the dress you want to fold in your facing. So you take the, you press at the first fold line and then again at the second fold line. And we're gonna pin this up at the neck and just base that in place at about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The nice thing about this is it creates a self interfacing so there's no need to interface this back facing because the fabric itself is the interfacing so I'm going to pin that and then I'm also going to take these two little tucks and I'm going to bring those tuck lines together and pin those in place I like to use glass head pins because that way if you happen to iron over them I don't have to worry about um, you know the plastic head pins if you've got a hot iron it can melt the little plastic balls on the top and with the glass head pins that's not a worry so you want to pin your facing in and pin your little pleats under the arm in and baste both of those in place on both the backs and then also put your little pleats in the front of the dress and baste those in place also the first thing that you are going to sew together is the shoulder seams. So go ahead and get your shoulder seams stitched together with a tiny French seam. I've basted down the tucks under the arms and I also chose to baste across the top neck of the dress to hold those little tiny tucks in place when I attach the lace. The next thing that you want to do is measure around the neckline to determine how much lace you will want um, to apply to the neckline. So get your tape measure out and measure from the back, pivoting at the front corner if you've got the square neckline, and go all around to the other back uh, opening of the dress. You'll want to use two times this amount of lace and you probably will not gather all of it but that's a good amount to start with. I also like to mark the lace right in the center front so that I have an idea if I'm gathering too much when I go to put it on the dress. Do the same thing measuring around one of the armholes to get that measurement so that you will know how much lace to use for each of the arms. Once your lace has been gathered, you're ready to apply it to the neck and the armholes. Um, to do this, I like to start by leaving about a half inch, even a little bit more, extended past the facing. And I prefer to use my open-toed foot and an awl to help me guide uh, everything very close while it's under the needle. And what you want to do is stitch right through the header lace and I'm going to try to keep that on the blue line that I've drawn. It's also very helpful to use your needle down um, position when you're doing this because that will uh, allow you to um, move things around a little bit and adjust things as you're stitching. So this is just a matter of uh, stitching the lace down. If this is something that you're not comfortable doing, just uh, holding it and guiding it uh, without having it attached. You can always try to pin it to the dress front. 
I don't find that to be very effective. If I felt like I needed more help keeping the lace in place, I would probably use a water-soluble glue. So I finished the lace around the neckline, uh, pivoting at the corners, and as I mentioned before, I extend a little bit of lace past the edge of the facing. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the lace to the sleeves at the same time. So I'm going to do both sleeves and then we will come back with the next step. So I finished the uh, lace application on both armholes and on the neckline. And the next step is going to be to press the seam allowance uh, back towards the dress. And in order to do that, you're going to need to carefully clip into the points if you've got either the uh, sweetheart ne neckline or the square neckline, and then also to clip around any curves so that it will, it will lay nice and smoothly as you press this back. So just go ahead and do that. And then I will take it to the iron and get this pressed. And after I press it, I generally will give it another shot of starch. So now I have um, pressed the seam allowances back towards uh, the fabric so that they're out of the way. And I did clip the curves so that it could make the nice round curve around the neck here. I don't worry about uh, if pressing flattens the lace a little bit because when I'm finished with this it's going to get rinsed and then washed and the lace if it's been flattened will um, you know come right back up. So the next step for this is to do a tiny zigzag and when you do your zigzag on one side the needle's going to swing off the fabric and on the other side it's going to swing just past the header thread. So it's a very tiny zigzag, uh, probably about a 1.5 width and length on my machine anyway. Uh, what you want to make sure is that you're just getting into the header of the lace as you stitch around and that's just your basic French uh, machine sewing. So when you do that, it will go through all the layers of fabric here and then just go into uh, the lace on one side. So go ahead and do that around your arms uh, and your neckline. You can use your 60 weight thread or if you prefer, you can switch to your 80 weight thread, which is even more invisible. So that is personal preference. Um, I'm not going to make you watch me stitch all that, but uh, that's the next step in securing the lace. Okay, so I have finished my little tiny zigzag stitch. Hopefully you can see it a little bit. Uh, the idea is that it's pretty invisible. So I've gone all around the neck and both uh, armhole openings. After you do that, if you're not planning to do any decorative stitching, then you can trim away the extra seam allowance. To trim away the seam allowance, I prefer to use what I call these little Ginger kindergarten scissors. And you would just slide them up here and then begin to cut away your seam allowance. I'm not going to actually cut it away now because I prefer to do a pin stitch just to add a little more interest to it. And I like to leave the seam allowance on until after the pin stitch is done. Um, but before you do anything else, we have to deal with these little uh, tails that, of lace that we left uh, at the end of the back facing here. And what you're going to want to do is, you can trim that a little bit smaller if you like, but you're going to fold it in half and fold it in half again. And then do with that same thread you're gonna, and same tiny zigzag stitch, you're going to zigzag across the bottom and up to the top of the lace here. And if you find that your machine wants to eat this lace, uh, you know, or pull it in, down into the feed dogs and stuff, you can use a little piece of water soluble stabilizer underneath it when you're zigzagging and that will prevent that. So I've already done that so that you can see what that would look like on this side of the back. 
So again, you've just got that doubled over and stitched down. So stitch down your back uh, lace there. And then if you're going to do any decorative stitching again over the lace, you'll want to do that now. And if not, you're done with that and you can trim away your seam allowance. Whenever I'm doing any of this close-up work, uh, I like to use these mag eyes, which you put on your head like a headband, and then you can um, dip these down. It really helps for the close-up work because it brings it up uh, and makes the, this fine little thread look like a rope. So if you have um, trouble seeing or you need to see better or close, more close-up when you're doing your stitching, these are a great resource um, and they're very affordable. So I have finished my pin stitching and then you can see where I have trimmed away the seam allowance nice and close uh, on the wrong side of the dress. I've left the stabilizer on here just because I'm not going to mess with trying to trim it away from the lace. This is a wash away stabilizer and it'll rinse right out, you know, just as when I rinse out the blue marks. So with the neckline and arm finished, the next step here is to do a tiny French seam on the side seams. So you wanna go ahead and do both side seams and get those finished. Okay, so the French seams are in the side, uh, both side seams, and I have pressed the seam towards the back. Now at this point, if you plan to do a uh, flat lace trim for the hem, and you can either do a flat lace with gathered lace at the bottom or, you know, just something simple like this, just a tiny lace addition to the hem, if that's your plan for your dress, then you would go ahead and do that now. If you plan to do a ruffle, which is what I'm going to do, you have to do a little bit of measuring and calculating. So I've already torn and starched the pieces for the ruffle. The next step is to get them to the right width. So what I'm going to do here is measure the front of the dress, and it's approximately 18 inches. You can go with rough measurements here. So that means the front portion of the ruffle I would want to be 36 inches. Now I'm trimming off this uh, salvage because I don't want to use that. And then I'm going to measure 36 inches. And I will cut this ruffle off here. <coughs> So the front is going to be 36 inches. The back ruffle needs to be in two pieces because we've got two sides of the back that we're working with. And so my back measurement here is <clears throat> nine and a quarter. So that would be 18 and a half inches for each side. So again, I am going to cut the salve edges off and I'm going to measure 18 and a half inches and then you can cut or tear that off. So now I have three pieces for my ruffle. Um, the longer piece for the front and the two shorter pieces for the sides. And so you will need to French seam these together so that you end up with one long ruffle. And doing it this way, you will be able to match up the uh, side seams of the ruffle to the side seams of the dress. So go ahead and French seam the side seams of this ruffle together and after you do that, then you can either apply lace or do a narrow hem at the bottom of the ruffle to finish it. Okay, so I have uh, seamed together the pieces for the ruffle, 
and I've pin stitched my lace to the bottom of the ruffle. The next step here is number one you have to do a little tiny narrow hem and for that I will fold this under twice and stitch that narrow hem in place and you need to do that on each side of the ruffle and then run gathering stitches um, along the upper edge of the ruffle and I would recommend stitching one at a quarter of an inch and one at three-eighths of an inch or even a half an inch I typically will stitch three rows of gathering stitches because I think that it you get prettier gathers that way but two or three either one um, that either one works so after you narrow hem go ahead and get your gathering stitches in and then you have the option you can either um, attach it with entredot if that's something you want to do or you can just attach the ruffle uh, like this where you just you know stitch it fabric to fabric right sides together and when you pin that together you're going to want to match up the center of the front ruffle with the center of the dress and you're going to want to match the side seams to the side seams and you know obviously it's going to stop at the edge of the facing here but so you can see I've got all my gathering stitches in and I have pinned the ruffle to the front of the dress I'm back here at the back facing of the dress and I have stopped the ruffle where the facing ends as you're supposed to what you want to do here is turn this facing over on top of the ruffle so that it's sandwiched between uh, the dress and the facing and you want to put a pin to hold that in place and then when you stitch your seam this ruffle will be encased uh, and it will give a nice finish to the back edge of the dress so go ahead and do that and stitch your 3 8 inch seam allowance and then you'll trim that seam allowance in half and you can zigzag or overcast or do something to finish the seam allowance on the inside and then we'll be back so I've stitched the ruffle on you can see at the back edge here where it's nicely encased so you have a nice finished edge at the back I've I did zigzag to uh, roll and whip and finish the seam allowance of the ruffle and so now I have my buttonholes marked and all I have left to do is sew the buttonholes and the buttons on and then this dress will be finished unless I decide I want to do some hand embroidery so go ahead and get your buttonholes and your buttons stitched on and your dress will be finished here we have the finished dress. As you can see, I had to add just a little bit of embroidery to the bodice because, well, I just like to do a little hand embroidery. And I also chose to add a couple uh, satin bows to the underarms because, again, I think that looks sweet. Um, those are optional. If you choose to do that, I do like to stitch the bows down so that they uh, don't come undone in the wash, but you can also make them removable or just tack them on by hand. I hope you've enjoyed this so long and will enjoy making lots of these sweet little dresses. Um, please feel free to share your pictures on Facebook. I would love to see them. And if you've enjoyed this and would like to get notified when I do additional videos, please hit the subscribe button.